Hoy es Today's the last day in my country. I'm going to do all I can for Chile. Mountainous dunes to climb today as Chile bids farewell to the Dakar. Canal Atia survived the onslaught of the Atacama. There are stages on the Dakar that are stamped in history. One of them will certainly be stage eight, the true debut of the Sala de Uyuni. Yesterday was one for the history books, where Honda suffered at the hands of Mother Nature and could do nothing to reverse her punishment. We ran out of options, and the last option was the one that got us here. It got them to the end, but only just, and Bereda's Dakar hope sunk in the sand. 700 k's pulling and pushing. It's a pity as we're doing a perfect race, and these things just weren't done by us. It was nearly as bad for KTM, but Coma salvaged his bike and with it, the race lead. It was an extreme day. The truth is, we were really at the limit of everything. The star of the day was Chile's Pablo Quintanilla, triumphing through adversity. Cold, rain, but so happy to win in the Dakar. When you win one, you want to win more. It was 7.30. PM, when three lonely Hondas limped back to the bivouac in Iquique. Rodriguez, Israel, and complete with a now running engine, Joan Bereda. They were home, but the devastation was clear to see. They sent us out, they insisted. We tried to say no in the morning, but at the end they said, you guys need to go, there's no other option. 
and suddenly everyone got onto the start line and we went out. At the end, when those things happen, we need to think about why they happen. But it's complicated. And next year we just need to bring a jet ski. Honda are hopeful that the final day in Chile will be more profitable as we climb into the Atacama Desert and Calamar. We lost 15 bikes yesterday, only one more than we lost on stage two to San Juan. But the total for both days of the marathon was 19 out, including Damian Gurel, the rider who gave his bars to Bereda. Determined that their race would not end in vain, the Honda riders lined up together to take the fight to the race on stage nine. And by kilometre 64, the four-strong group of HRC riders was driving a wedge amongst the riders ahead of them. Working as a team, they gained time hand over fist until all four sat atop the timesheets at checkpoint two. With nothing to lose, Bereda, Rodriguez and Israel were doing all they could to help the cause of Gonsalves. And as they reached the refueling point at checkpoint three, the urgency in the group was clear. As they rested, the Honda riders were deep in discussion. When pushed though, they gave away very little information. Our strategy is to try to do all I can day by day and try to arrive at the end because this rally it's impossible to do a strategy because there are so many variables. There are a lot of things that can happen that affect the race. We will keep trying each day. There are still four before the finish and we'll try and get the best result for Honda. A boatload of KTMs began the day at the head of the field and Quintanier was the one who opened the road. After struggling a bit in the early dunes, he fell foul of a late waypoint. So did Toby Price, and at kilometre 365, with lots of mixed lines, the pair were stranded. When Coma arrived, Price admitted he should have followed the master, but he didn't, and lost 20 minutes. Svitko was sixth today, continuing his fine form this year. He gained some time on Price and Quintanier in the fight for third, after finding the waypoint faster than them. But this was the ride that Bereda needed yesterday. Fourth place and consistently running a high pace. He transitioned from contender to team player seamlessly. As the latter stages of the special broke up the field, he lost time, but still recovered well from his disappointment of losing the Dakar. Coma today was best of the rest. He's now the rally leader and his tactics have changed. An early navigation error cost him a few minutes. Unfortunately for him, the time that he lost was to his closest rival, Paolo Gonçalves. For seven and a half days of the rally, Gonçalves was the backup rider to Bereda. Yesterday morning, he became Honda's hope, and today he stepped it up again. The lead of the race is nearly in his grasp. The gap is down to just five minutes to Coma. For the second time in the rally, Helder Rodriguez stormed the opposition. Late in the race, he put the hammer down and forced the pace to leave everyone else, including his teammates, in his way. I saw you behind me and I thought you stayed there. I know, I guess that's true. It's complicated when someone's behind and trying to follow you. <laughs> so despite the sign language going awry, it was a day for Honda. Rodriguez, four minutes to the good and four Hondas in the top five. Coma, the lone adversary. But overall, it's reversed. Gonçalves is the only hope Honda has of the win, and their gap is closing right down on Coma, our rally leader. Chilean driver Victor Galejos sprung the surprise today. Fifth last year, today he won his first stage on the Dakar. 2015. The man who's supported by Honda Chile rides for the same Tamarugal XC rally team as Casale, and he's now sixth overall. After having lost the lead of the rally yesterday, Rafael Sonic took back 
the first position today. He finished second on the ninth stage, 15 minutes 35 behind the brilliant Galejos. And the battle is still on though, as Ignacio Casali, after losing his first position, still fought on. He finished fourth today with a gap of 26 minutes to the stage winner. With four stages to go, only four minutes separate him and Sonic. And the man who's been third since stage five, Sergio Lafuente, is really consistent and finished once again third today. He's battling for his first podium on the Dakar, which looks to be well within his grasp. The recent winner of the Red Bull Frozen Rush, teammate of Travis Pastrana in Rallycross, and the Baja 500 champion Bryce Menzies came to pay a visit to the Dakar, a good opportunity to have a first taste of a rally Just that he hopes to compete in. The American showed a lot of interest in the cars driven by Stefan Betterhansel and Cyril Dupre. A lot of the train and stuff like that seems like it's pretty close to what we do, but it's 14 days straight of racing. You know, we only race for one day. Um, we race for a thousand miles straight and then you're done. Plan is hopefully it would be cool to see me over here next year, but you know, it's a, it's a big process, a big program, and. Um, I think the biggest thing is just to get in the car and test and see if I'm even capable of doing it. So hopefully within the next couple of years, uh, I'll be over here racing and that's my goal. After eight days of racing, it's been a rough but impressive drive through the dunes for rally boss Nasa Aratia. Our target to keep going like this, you know, and uh, uh, just to control uh, Genil de Villiers. Alatia has a slim advantage, and one man is ready to strike. Mr. Consistency, Genil de Villiers. It's not easy to gain time on a guy like Nasser, and if you, if you gain it, you, you need to try and keep it. Third and totally unexpected at such a high level, rookie Yazid Al Raji is gaining in confidence and he certainly wants more. Sure, Hadi, we are here, we show everybody we are good, we can fight to win. First year for me, I come to learn and fight with top guys. With five days to go, nothing is decided yet. Africa.